Hey, hi, yeah. everybody. I'm Francois Saunier. I'm Mathieu. We are coming from France. Uh, we are the co-founders with this Eric Theron, who's there in the audience, of Instill. And we are going to talk about how we built Instill with Dart. So Instill is an online service uh, with, with the one you can build, okay. you can create. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay. With, with the one you can create uh, informative videos. So before Mathieu told, told you about technical architecture evolution and how we move from Angular to Polymer and why we move from Angular to Polymer, uh, I will talk to you about how we are, who we are and what Instill is. So we are three developers with a strong uh, Java background development and web application development. And uh, a long time ago, far away from here in France, we used Java stacks with MVC frameworks like Struts or Spring MVC with a piece of JS and then Prototype and then jQuery and all the frameworks you can have in, in JavaScript. And in 2008, we started building large uh, single page applications with Squid, and we had also some experience with Flex. So one year ago, we were discussing uh, video, and uh, we observed that uh, video traffic uh, was always increasing on the internet, and that people were consuming more and more videos, uh, even in, in, their, in their works, to share informations, to make some presentations. But at the same time, we also noticed that uh, people were impedimented uh, in such video production because it was time consuming. So as we didn't find any tools or services on the internet to, to produce videos, to, to be efficient to, to produce videos, we decided to create Instead. So Instead is an online service uh, with, with the one you don't have to to consider technical videos, technical video stuff like audio synchronizations, transitions, animations, and all, all the things. Uh, so how it works? Uh, it's quite simple. It still helps you to structure your information and then to choose uh, visual representations uh, to illustrate uh, what you want to explain to people. And then it helps you to record your voice all over the video. So if you have an ID, uh, in one hour you can produce a short video to explain what you want to explain to people, what the, the, the information you want to share with people. So I have a short video demonstration of how Instill works that I will command. <coughs> so when you create, when you create a, a project with Instill, we start by collecting some information like the title of the, the video, the objectives, the main objectives you want to, the information that, you, that people will use after, the main points, so the structure of the, the information. And at the end of this, this step, you've got a review. And this review uh, allows you to, to check that you didn't forget anything you wanted to build. Then you can immediately have a preview of, of the video of this stage. So it's a preview, it's not a video, it's rendered in the browser. So it's based only on the information you gave to, to, to us. To, to. And after that, I can add a new visual sequence to my, my video. So I add an item list to explain who we are. So we are three software engineers uh, <laughs> with Mathieu, there, Eric, and myself. So we can inst have an instant preview to check that the video is, is OK and to, uh, to, 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 to see uh, the animation. And after that, uh, we are ready to record our voice, so we have to accept the microphone authorization request. And then when you click on the record button, we can record the voice all over the video, and we control the animation flow by the next button. So the voice uh, is the main uh, 
the main way to control the video flow, the animation flow. And then you can just publish your video directly on YouTube, or you can get a download link. OK. So why did we choose Dart? It's all about productivity. One year ago, um, Mathieu there uh, told us, hey, guys, wh why don't we start with Dart? And maybe because they call me uh, Papa, so they call me Daddy in English, uh, maybe because I'm older than they are, or maybe because I'm an old-fashioned guy, I don't know. Um, I say, no, guys, we don't start with Dart. We, we start with the technologies we know and uh, where we are already productive. And after a long discussion with Mathieu and Eric, uh, I admitted that maybe I was wrong. And I, I was wrong. So we agreed that Dart presented all the, all the advantages of the technologies we, we knew. And we decided to, to, to start with Dart. So we started with this technology. And at the beginning, we were very productive, but we reached some limitations with the first UI framework we choose. So that's what Mathieu is going to talk about. <laughs> so first, um, a quick overview of the global architecture of Instill. So Instill is a single page application made with Dart. We have a Java backend, so the application is loaded once, and then only JSON information is shared with the, with the backend. Um, as we render movies, uh, we can't uh, render a movie in the lifetime of a HTTP request. So we have a message queue. And the whole application is asynchronous because we have another Java application which render and, uh, and publish the movies. And um, later, we hope we'll be able to connect directly the message queue to the Dart front end so we can, uh, we can give uh, real-time information to the user about rendering and publishing. So, as you can see, we, we kept uh, a Java backend because, um, because we were OK with, uh, with the backend. Um, our stack is uh, very lightweight. And the um, so whole stack is, is great. But the um, truth is, uh, when you come back from Dart code, uh, Java is, be is becoming to, to be a bit, uh, a bit painful. Uh, let's talk about the backend. We have um, CQRS and event source backend. CQRS stands for Common and Query Responsibility Segregation. Um, I'll be short. Uh, the main uh, idea behind that design pattern is separating write and, um, and read responsibilities. Um, in our case, that's the way we communicate between the front end and the back end. We have, um, we, we have a query bus and a command bus. And for example, when I need a project in the front end, I will send a get project query to the back end. It's, um, the, the meaning is stronger, even stronger than, uh, than RPC calls. And uh, when I have an action, which would uh, require um, a read, a uh, write, sorry, on the database, I will send the change title command, for example, to, to change the title. Um, event sourced means we, we don't save whole objects in the database. Uh, when, uh, when the user changed the title, the title of, his, of his presentation, we don't save a new presentation object. We save a titled changed event. Mm, so that's, as a reminder, a typical screen of Instill. So um, as in 99.7% uh, of web applications, you can see we have forms. <laughs> so, and, uh, but we, we also make real-time previsualization. We'll say preview in the, in the rest of the presentation. So we use also Canvas, uh, audio elements, uh, video elements, and um, that makes a lot of uh, asynchronous code. So, so asynchronous generators are, are welcome for us. But we also use the Hojo API. And um, that's a fun API because it changed a lot in the last, uh, last months. But um, that's the API we need to record the people voice. So that was important for us, even if it was uh, very unstable. <coughs> So we started the application one year ago, and uh, we needed a framework for the interface at that moment. Um, Angular Dart was the natural choice. It was the more mature uh, framework uh, for interfaces at that moment. And we felt very productive in the, in the first weeks. Uh, we, felt very, we felt very productive uh, because of the data binding and, and everything. But uh, we, we actually quickly, quickly reached 
some difficulties. I'm going to talk about them now. Um, in the rest of the presentation, I will use uh, that very complicated component as an example. So that's a player. We have the preview part, a time indication, a play and a stop button. <coughs> and uh, that's why I'm going to compose it. So we have the, the player at the top, which is the whole component, with two sub-components, a control panel and a renderer. The control panel is composed of uh, two buttons, the timing indication, and the renderer uses canvas and video elements. So this composition may be simpler, simpler but uh, it's for the purpose of the presentation. With Angular, the good way to, to the good way, one way, one good way to code that uh, component would be to have um, a player API object living beside the component. So the player API is binding to the player and could be used in the controllers. And um, I'm going to code uh, the whole component. I have a movie in the player API on which I make the binding. I have play and stop methods who can be called directly by the buttons. And um, when I call the play method, I will have a, a play event which will be handled by the renderer. So that's OK, but we, we actually had two problems with uh, with that. Uh, first, the renderer, we, we want to, to reuse it. We have, um, as, you, as you saw in the, um, in the screen, we have lots of preview thumbnails, and uh, the, the renderer subcomponent should be used in, that, uh, in those thumbnails. And the truth is, Angular Dart 1 <laughs> made the, the creation of isolated, tiny components very complicated because. In that case, I, I, I can't really isolate my, my renderer. The, the other problem we had, we had with, um, with that code is that um, play and stop events, they, they weren't events. They actually were orders. And it wouldn't be a problem if uh, it was only that component. But we had, we had lots and lots of events, of events which actually were orders. And the code became complicated because of that. <coughs> And let me tell uh, the complete story of a user action. So I have my, uh, I have my user. Um, it's a girl. Her name is Natasha. Natasha wants to change the title of, the pre of her presentation. So she has an input. Uh, she changed the title. The browser fire a change event. That change event is handled by Angular Dart. We, we don't see it. And Angular Dart operates a binding. So I have my project object. Uh, its, detail, its detail will be changed, title will be changed, and uh, okay. <laughs> I will handle, um, I will detect the change in the object in our controller. Our controller will create a change title command, which will be sent to the backend, and the backend will save the title change event in the database. So here, <laughs> Natasha, if she could see the whole journey, she, she, she may ask, she may wonder, was it the, the, the simplest way, guys, really? Is it the simplest, archi simplest architecture with the data binding and stuff to, to transform a change event from the browser to a title change event in the backend? So that wasn't technically complicated, but it doesn't feel right. We, had, uh, we have other examples of, uh, of difficulties. For example, uh, when we, you, you add a visual in your presentation, we, we have an editor with de which depends on the, of the kind of, of visual you use. And um, with Angular, the only way to, to switch the, the editor, uh, depending on the kind of visual, was, uh, was a big switch. So that's okay when you have uh, seven uh, kinds of visuals, but when you have 20, uh, it's becoming complicated. And we wanted to programmati programmatically as those components. And the only way to, to do it really programmatically with Angular was, was to use the internal uh, technical uh, places of the, of the framework. So that wasn't good. Um, another example was about synchronous control. Because we have, um, we have video and sound, we want them to be really synchronous. And if we use the scope and, um, and states, we, we, we would have used uh, the dirty checking internal mechanism of the scope. And, if you don't know about dirty checking, just, just know it's by nature, it can be, it can be synchronous. 
So we had a state, we had a state which cannot really be watched because the watch system wasn't synchronous. So we had uh, events for, uh, for saying, hey, uh, please synchronously check the state. And it was complicated. It's, to be fair, Angular Dart was very good at uh, some tasks. Data binding is, is really great, and Angular is the, is the first really good uh, data-centric framework. But the component model wasn't uh, the, the one we needed. So we started, uh, that was um, eight months ago, we started to, um, to watch uh, for Polymer and uh, to check that um, its uh, model, its component model was good for us. And it was. Um, Polymer was very beta at that moment, but uh, reminder, we are using uh, the Hojo API, so um, this is the, uh, the list uh, of browser, uh, of browser we, we support is, uh, is actually short. So no problem with Polymer. Um, at that moment, no. Uh, how are we, we're, we're gonna take back the player component. How are we gonna code it with Polymer? We have binding. So uh, a movie object is binding to the, to the player by the controller, which will bind the movie to the other subcomponents. The timing will be binding to the, in the template by the control panel. Our button with, uh, will fire DOM uh, native events, click events. The control panel will handle them and will be able to fire play and stop events. And they, when it receives those events, the player will be able to call directly the renderer component play and stop. So that composition is more verbose, but um, but um, it's actually simpler because there is no question of how things should be done. You bind elements, you fire events, and you, you call directly your child components. And um, with that composition, we can reuse the renderer. So th that's what we needed. So at that moment, uh, we started a migration process. I was okay to, to live uh, two weeks in a cave and make the whole <laughs> Migration and come back, but um, Papa, Dad wasn't okay with that. I think uh, I would have missed him. So, so I did that. <laughs> we we had a, a components hierarchy with Angular, and um, we started using as as Polymer components are standard DOM elements. We started changing the the, the last elements in the hierarchy. So we did not try to to map the two binding system. We did not try to broadcast the DOM events in the scope. We just used Polymer components as uh, DOM elements in our Angular application. And we changed layer by layer the whole application. We reached the controller, and they just became stateful components. And uh, routing, that's simple. Everything's component. People who compare the, um, the two frameworks Angular Dart and, um, and Polymer always miss three things, which are injection and services, the scope, and routing. Uh, that's because Polymer is not a framework. Polymer is just a libra library. Um, I will explain how we replace them. About injection and services, uh, that was actually simple, because the uh, dependency injection and mechanisms library of Angular Dart is, uh, can be reused uh, separately, so we used it. And we, uh, we implemented uh, an inject annotation in, um, in our code, so uh, we have an instill element which extends the polymer base element, and uh, in its life cycle, we, we have uh, an injection, uh, injection process. So that's not complicated, it's uh, the same actually. Our implementation is not perfect yet because we use reflection, but we uh, We'll watch another system soon. About the scope, um, in our use cases, the scope it uh, satisfied um, three use cases. There is the communication between related components, but um, that's the subject of, uh, of the component model, so we've uh, already talked about it. The internal change tracking, because sometimes uh, binding is not enough and you want to, to manipulate the DOM manually and communication between non-related components. I will talk about the two last ones. About internal change tracking, um, 
there's nothing to say actually. Everything is in the is in the framework. So uh, the scope watch inside an element is replaced by the property change mechanisms or the observe property annotation. So in that case, if I change my project, the project change will be automatically automatically called by the framework. And if I change the title, uh, the title observer will be will be called. The real question was about communication between non-related components. You you should have a few use cases like that one. Uh, if you have a lot, uh, you have a problem. <laughs> but um, it's that um, example. I have um, the interesting part is the green one. I have a theme chooser, and um, when my uh, user changes the theme, theme, sorry, a theme chooser, when my user changes the theme, I want the three previews to be to be changed in real time. So, if I use the previews, the, the, the mechanisms that I already talked about, uh, I would have to fire an event until the application container. But uh, I don't want my application container to be to be to be aware of. Uh, of a theme, he, he doesn't care. He, he manipulates um, big components. He doesn't care about the theme system. So what I want to do is that I want to be able to to broadcast a theme change event directly to the preview. For that use case, we have an event bus. Um, we actually use the package event bus, which is uh, available on pub. Um, we extended it a little bit for unregistering uh, purpose. So in our temp chooser, we have a heaven bus fire, new temp changed. That's uh, actually a true code of, uh, of our code base. And in previous elements, we have just a event bus listen. So those events have to be as few as possible. But um, in, that type of, uh, in that type of use cases, you have the event bus. About routing, um, we actually didn't miss it. Um, if you need it, it's uh, like for dependency injection, you can use uh, the package separately of uh, Angular. But in our case, um, we, we try to make instill the more, we, we try to make the, the experience the, more, the closer possible to a native application. So, we have parts of the application which are almost always displayed, but not always. And what we would have to do with Angular Dart is, um, is nested views. But if you, if you ask the internet about net, nested views, <laughs> you will have that kind of, uh, of uh, response. Uh, nested views are complicated, and routing isn't done for that. So we introduced um, a notion of places. A place uh, contains two things. The the state of the application, which uh, which project I am uh, I am working on, and the display state, which which screen, which view is displayed, which um, parts are displayed, and that whole um, place is serializable. So um, we actually use the history API, and uh, the, the goal of routing, which is uh, sharing links and uh, manipulating the browser history, we, we we don't need to to, to share links. It's um, not relevant for Instill, but we wanted to be able to use next, previous, and to make refresh on the same page. And um, with our places, we are able to serialize them and to use the history API. So that's great for the user, and uh, that's great uh, also for the developer experience, because uh, when you refresh the application after changing the code, it's uh, just the same place. So um, as a conclusion, um, we have a, a really great development environment. I think everybody here agrees that Dart tools are, are great. Uh, the, the package managers, build systems, is the IDE. I'm actually switching from uh, Eclipse to IntelliJ in Java, and uh, the IDE is, is, very, is really great, and uh, I'm, I'm happy about the plugin. Um, <clears throat> it has JavaScript lightness. You change the code, you refresh your browser, and uh, that's it. But we have the productivity enhancements. Okay, I, I just a uh, true language <laughs> with the refactor possibilities and etc. I actually already felt that way once with uh, with Flex. Flex was a, a great framework, but um, difference is here this is web, C 
this is not Flash. <laughs> so that's great. We are able to use JavaScript libraries. We actually use a perfect scroll bar in our views. And we can use web tools. So um, we use actually SAS for CSS and browser sync. So um, when we make modifications, it's uh, ref refreshed um, the browser. And that's great for, for CSS, actually, because it doesn't refresh the whole page. <clears throat> and that's it. Um, we, we have the, the greatest development environment we, we never had. So thank you. Merci. Thank you. Thank you.